Okay, Jim, for today's episode, we, <laughs> I'm really excited about this. You're excited. Ooh. I know. <laughs> Let's for just once. lean into it. Okay. <laughs> I'm what? I'm excited. Okay. So for today's episode, we're going to look right at the sun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is not what you're yeah. supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a great idea. We're going to look right at the sun's impact on our eyes uh -huh. is the rest of that statement. Okay, okay. Because of the solar eclipse. Oh, yes. That is coming. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about why we shouldn't look at solar eclipse. What's the chemistry of our eyes? And... um something our eyes and margarine have in common, which is weird. Okay. And we're going to talk about solar eclipse glasses. And I think I'm even going to use my modeling kit. Oh, okay. So that's exciting. Sounds good. Cool. Are you ready to dive into it? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life at night. I was about to say nighttime <laughs> edition. Yeah, so we're recording at a different time of day now. Yeah. Um, schedules change. A time of night, you could say. It's so funny that this is an episode about the sun. And here we are <laughs> recording. <laughs> well, you know, that's why we had to be sneaky. It's like you can't can't talk about the sun right in front of it, you know? It's yeah, like, you can't. It's kind of rude. Right. Wait till, the, <laughs> wait till it leaves the room at least. I didn't even think about the fact that we weren't doing this. So we changed. So if we have different, if we have nighttime vibes now, mm -hmm. that's why we've changed it up. Yep. I'm drinking decaf. So. And I, my water's over there. I'm still just drinking water. This is a change that may be this way for a while. So we are getting used to it. You might have to get used to it. Maybe it won't be even that different at all, but it's worth it to say something just in case people are like, man, you guys are. You sound tired. <laughs> <You> sound tired. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, yeah. Jam sounds bored. Like, no, I'm not. I still have chemistry. I just. You're just I'm, tired. It's just the end of the day. Well, luckily for our first night time one, this is the type of episode that I was so excited about it that I told the people I was hanging out with before this what I was doing and explained it to them. And they're like, that's so fun. Nice. So that's what kind of episode we're doing. Okay? okay, cool. But before we get into it, we need to dedicate this episode to two of our newest community members. Yay. Yes. That would be Cullen R and Jeanette in this episode is dedicated to you. Thank you guys so much for joining our super cool chem community of yeah. patrons, helping keep the show going, helping keep this show free for the chemistry part to be free to anyone to access, covering the cost of us making the show. It's not free to make the show, but we want it to be free to access the chemistry. So yeah. thank y'all so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And one of, I think Cullen wrote me a really nice note on Patreon. Nice. So thanks. That was sweet. Made my day. Nice. Okay, so um, now let's get into this episode that I'm really excited about. Okay, let's do it. So our question came from Sam N. Okay. Sam N. <laughs> and Sam he N. said, <laughs> um, is there any chemistry involved with the upcoming solar eclipse? What makes eclipse glasses safe to look at the sun versus regular glasses where our eyes will still be damaged? And how does the sun specifically damage our eyes in the first place? Mm. So those are good questions. The short answer is there's not any chemistry Sorry. <laughs> well, that's that. kind of what I thought. I was like, <laughs> probably none, right? And then I looked it up and the first thing that came up was an article from Chemistry and Engineering News that laid it all out for me. And I was like, this is awesome. Nice. <laughs> it was like perfect question to ask. So nice. it was great. Okay. So, and part of why Sam asked this question is because in a few weeks from the, when this episode comes out, like I think just two weeks, there will be a total solar eclipse coming through where we live. Mm -hmm. We're actually just out of the path of totality by like 20 minutes. Mm, so that's kind of sad that is because so what basically a solar eclipse is for those of you who don't know and i didn't really know i had to like go back and remind myself and look it up is the moon will pass in front of the sun mm -hmm. and there's different types of solar eclipse so we just had one that came in october where the um, moon went over the sun but it was further away so you could still see a ring of the sun outside yeah so the sun wasn't totally blocked but what's happening this time is the sun will be totally blocked. Mm. So, because I guess the moon is closer to us. So it's like big enough proportionally to totally block out the sun. Got it. Yep. So you'll be able to see the corona, mm -hmm. the aura sort of around the sun that normally we can't see because the sun's so bright. Wow. Yeah. So that'd be very exciting. That's crazy. Uh, it's perfect because this is 
the intersection of two things. I have always been obsessed with space. Cool. Which I think there's a couple times that that has like, I, I can't really think exactly that some topic has, has like ventured into that area. Yeah. yeah. And so I love eclipses. I love thinking about them, talking about them. Um, and I remember years ago seeing the like forecast like, oh, wait, we're, we're going to get one in October and April. Mm-hmm. And like, because there was one, I remember I worked at a different place. I worked in Plano and I was commuting and there was and like we have a very, very partial one that we got. But of course, other places got like a really good view of it. This is like probably 17, 18, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, the next one's not until 2023. And then there's going to be one in 2024 too. And I was like, what? Yeah. But also those years sounded so far away. Yeah. But I have been kind of counting down the days. And really? it's crazy that we got, we get pretty good versions in Texas. Of both of them. Of both of them. Like yeah. enough to be like super cool to watch. Well, and actually the day of the annular solar eclipse, <laughs> we had just moved into our new house and I was like working on a shelf in the bathroom. So I was like in the heart of the house uh-huh. and I came out and I was like, why is this light so weird? Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I was like doing something else. And then I was like, it's a solar eclipse. That's why it looks like it's overcast, even though the sun is out. Like it mm-hmm. took me a second. And the only way I had to view it was I went and grabbed a dirty colander and you uh, can turn yeah. your back to it. And like, so I could see the solar eclipse that way, but mm-hmm. it's very, it was very odd. Yeah. Very I, odd. The light was weird. So I think this one's going to be even weirder. Yeah. Are you, do you think you're going to go into the path of totality? I might. So a mutual friend of ours and I might try to go to this event that's happening on the same day on purpose mm-hmm. that is in Austin, which is more in the path of totality, the way it kind of goes down diagonally across Texas. Um, and so we may or may not work that out. Not official yet. You and who? Sean. <gasps> That'll be so fun. Yeah. So maybe it'll happen. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, um, I'm going to tell you all about the chemistry that you can tell Sean all about on your car ride down there. Okay. Okay. Deal. So, um, yeah, we're going to be very close to the main path of it. I purchased my solar eclipse viewing sheet. I just got a piece of the paper. Oh, nice. Um, because I was prepping this episode and realized I should probably go ahead and do it. Uh huh. So, um, all I have to say, there's going to be a solar eclipse, but you and I and probably everyone have heard that you should not look at the sun during a solar eclipse. Mm-hmm. And there's that whole thing where Donald Trump came out and looked right at it. That's like what I think of when I think of don't look at the sun during a solar eclipse. Mm-hmm. But I never thought until Sam asked me of why we shouldn't look at the sun during a solar eclipse. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, Here's the thing is really you should never look at the sun. <laughs> right. It's not because it's a solar eclipse, <laughs> but you're never tempted to look at the sun really regularly because it hurts and it's uncomfortable unless there's a solar eclipse. And that's why we hear about it all the time during solar eclipses. Got it. That was so, my theory. I, yeah. thought, <laughs> I thought it seems unlikely that the sun would be more intense to and more damaging to us. Yeah. Than on any other day, it just seemed like, Everyone's going to be tempted to now yes. on this specific day. Yeah. And that's why you say it. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I'm yawning because it's nighttime. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's correct. So it's, you can't really, you shouldn't really ever look at the sun very much, but during a solar eclipse, you'd be tempted to look at it a lot during a short period of time. And that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And here's why I've gone totally off script now. I'm not even looking at my notes because I'm so excited about this. Okay. I'm going to give you an analogy and then we'll dive into the chemistry. Okay. Okay, so (laughs) you know how in video games where you have like some shields and your shield will be up until it takes a certain amount of damage and then your shields go down and they need time to regenerate? Yes. And if they don't regenerate, then you start taking damage? Yes. Okay. Our eyes have basically little sun shields that take the hit and then they need time to regenerate. And if they don't fully regenerate... Before you look at the sun again and you've used up all your sun shields, you're going to start taking the damage to your eyeballs. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So do, are you ready to get into the chemistry of it? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say, first of all, this maybe is kind of confusing, but I'll do like an overview at the end. Okay. okay. So the sun comes into your eyes and it will hit one molecule that is called, um, it's cis retinol. Okay. Retinol actually, cis retinol. So it's a cis molecule 
And I have a modeling kit for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see. Um, but a cis bond kind of makes this U shape. So like it has two carbons and then the two biggest groups are pointing up and up in the same direction. So it kind of makes a U. So you can imagine like almost like the bottom of the Big Dipper. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh so yeah. You, you can see that. Totally. So it makes a U and then a trans bond makes like a Z. So it has that same like base carbon, two carbons are bonded together, but one's pointing up and one's pointing down. Got it. Okay. And we've talked about this before, but I thought it'd be fun to show the models. Yes. And this is um, what is similar with margarine is margarine goes from being cis bonds to being, or from being trans bonds to being cis bonds. Right? Yes. So that it, it doesn't, it stacks up better. Right. We've talked about that conversion before mm -hmm. and trans fats are bad, right? Right. So we've talked about this cis and trans bonds that happen in margarine. And now that also happens in our eyes because when the sun comes in, it takes something that looks like this and it turns it into this. Mm. And you might think, oh, well, that's easy. You can just like rotate this around. No, you can't just rotate it around. The sun actually has to break a bond and then a bond has to reform to get the, back to the Z. Okay. So if you're not watching on YouTube, I physically just broke one of the bonds and had to turn it around because if you just try to twist it, it doesn't right. work. A bond will have to break. Got it. I see. So it's a is full this, conversion. And is this like, we've talked about this in other things, the sun damaging things like plastics, mm -hmm. you know, the color fadings with that. Is this UV damage happening or yeah, is something different? Yeah, there's like lenses that filter out some type of light and uh -huh. then some gets through. Okay. So, so, and it's not really super damaging because it just converts it from the cis to the trans version. Mm -hmm. And then that trans version is able to, um, like when it has that trans version, it sort of is the thing that's going to tell the molecules around it, like, oh, I've absorbed some light and through a very complex pathway, that basically tells your brain that you're seeing light. Okay. So we went to the first molecule, which was a cis retinal. Mm -hmm. And then we went to a trans retinal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we went from molecule A to molecule B. Okay. Then molecule B goes to, um, it goes through another transformation. And this would be anyway, or if you got more exposure? No, anyway. So okay. this is just your basic fi functioning of what happens in your eyes when light comes in from the sun. There's like the first few layers filter out some of the sun. And then when it gets in past those, it'll hit this cis molecule, turn it into a trans molecule. So uh -huh. a chemical reaction will happen with the sun's light. And then there's another functional group on there called an aldehyde. We've talked about fun functional groups before. They're just collections of molecules. No big deal. So it's like the same or collections of atoms, I guess collections of atoms that will act the same way mm. when you see them consistently. But the big thing is this functional group, this aldehyde has a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen uh -huh. and it will go through what we call an, a reduction reaction. We've talked about oxidation and reduction before where oxidation is adding bonds to oxygen and reduction is reducing bonds to oxygen. Oil rig. Oil rig. There you go. I think oil rig is easier in organic chemistry than it is in gen chem because mm. in gen chem you have to do like oxidation states and count off all these numbers. And it's really confusing mm. in organic chemistry. It's just how many bonds are there to carbon? So here's a good example. This is a, or to oxygen. I mean, how many bonds are there to oxygen? So this is a good example. We have a carbon and it has two bonds to an oxygen here. Mm -hmm. And so this exact molecule can break that bond and then it'll bond to a hydrogen. And now you can see this carbon only has one bond to oxygen. Uh, I see. Okay. So that's a reduction reaction. Uh -huh. But if it were to go the other way, this is the, that would be oxidized. So if you go from single to double, oxidized, double to single, reduced. Got it. Okay. So I have a little modeling kit that you can see also, or you can, um, you can go look on the YouTube or you can look it up. So basically it gets reduced. So first a double bond gets switched and that goes from molecule A to molecule B. It gets switched from cis to trans. And then... It goes from being an aldehyde to being an alcohol, reducing that bond. Got it. And then that will go through several more series of steps, which are too complicated that I don't want to talk about today. And then it goes back to molecule A. Okay. So all that takes some time. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, molecule A is a little shield that will absorb the sun's light, turn into something else that sends chemical pathways that says, oh, you've absorbed light. And then that will be 
go through the chemical ox, uh, chemical reduction, and then the reduced molecule will go all the way back through and end up back at molecule A. Okay. And is there, is there some aspect of that that <clears throat> requires like our bodies to release something to get it back? I know you said you did that. It's a lot of steps. No, it's like through an enzyme. Okay. So it just happens automatically. I think the biggest thing though is it needs time. Got it. So if you're <clears throat> looking at the sun one time and like say you're driving to work in the morning and you the sun, you look at the sun, it's like, whoa, and then you pull your visor down, uh-huh. then that's going to give a break from looking at the sun and you'll have time to regenerate and it'll be fine. But what happens on solar eclipse days very often is people are glancing up at it several times over the course of, say, like an hour. And that cumulative effect is bringing down the amounts of molecule A that you have in your eye over time. And once you've done that, if you have no more of molecule A and then you look back at the sun again, there's nothing to absorb that light and do anything positive. And then it starts breaking bonds, producing radicals, and doing that photo degradation that we talked about that actually can make it to where you're getting damage of your cells. Got it. Okay. So that's when things get dicey is if you cumulatively look at the sun enough in a short enough period that your molecule A stash hasn't restored, then you're not going to be able to effectively block out those damaging rays and other things will start taking hits. Got it. Got it. And that is how your son, how your son, <laughs> that is how your eyes have little sun shields in them, just like a video game. That is crazy. And it goes through two common reactions that we talked about before. And there's photo degradation, which we've also talked before extensively in the episode, Why Do Things Fade in the Sun? And we're going to replay that episode for you next week before in our re release. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And that is so cool and so weird. I know. That there's that much going on in our eyeballs. I know. There's so much going on in our eyeballs. And that it's that essential chemistry, like stuff we've talked about a bunch of times. I know. I was blown away. Yeah. It's a much more complicated thing. Obviously, there's like a four-step reaction pathway to get from molecule C back to molecule A. And there's enzymes that play a part. And, of course, you know, then... Part of it, part of the shield, it's not just shielding. It's also communicating to your brain that it that light exists, which is crazy. So it's very cool, I yeah. think, but and very complicated beyond what we're going to talk about today. But I thought this part was the fun and the most relevant part to what we'd already talked about. Yeah. And I got to use my modeling kit. Nice. That was really helpful, honestly. Yeah. So if, if you're listening, you can go check us out on YouTube and actually see the modeling kit. Mm-hmm. I think that's fun. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, that's it. Do you want to explain that process back to me and talk about the um, the chemistry reactions? And then as a little treat, I'll explain the solar glasses part. Nice. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Okay, so our eyes, this is very good news. Our eyes are set up for some amount of exposure to the sun. Yes. <laughs> oh man, so relieved to hear that. <laughs> Because it's hard to avoid. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a normal situation, mm-hmm. if you're having a normal amount of exposure to the sun, i.e. not looking directly at it um, for, for an extended amount of time or whatever. Or a cumulative amount of time. Right. Very, very close together or whatever. Um, what would happen is these molecules are in this layer over our eyes ready to be able to um, receive and be affected by Mm -hmm. the sun's light, by the UV, by the strength of it, the things that, um, that would be damaging us or whatever. I don't know if it's a layer over our eyes. There are lenses that are layers over our eyes, but I actually think this is like within the cones and rods of our eyes. Oh, wow. I think it's like inside. Interesting. I th- so think. that's what we're trying to protect from doing damage is inside, which makes sense, mm-hmm. I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm not I'm not a biologist or an eye doctor, so yeah. you know, but that's that was my understanding based yeah. on what I read. And I have glasses, that's <laughs> all I know. So um I do have a layer in front of my eyes that I need for different <laughs> reasons. <laughs> um, so it's a it's protecting some important stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it is set up to be able to 
um, be affected by the sun without and without being destroyed or damaged uh, beyond repair. Yes. And the way that works is the um, molecule A, which is the, can I, yes, which is the, this is the cis, mm -hmm. right? Um, U-shaped, for those of you who can't see it. U-shaped uh, orientation of the molecule here. Mm -hmm. And then whenever the sun hits it, it breaks bonds mm -hmm. to turn it into a trans, um, which has to break and then be able to basically reform a bond the other way. So that's now like a Z shape for mm -hmm. those of you listening. So from a U shape to a Z shape and it had to break a bond to do that mm -hmm. and then form another one. Um, and then a, so molecule A, molecule B. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to these, <laughs> so is this, is this a different thing? Or that's a is different part of molecule B. Okay. Different this part. One this okay, one's yeah, a yeah, different yeah, yeah. part of molecule B. Okay. So we have one, we have a double bond on one side and this, this other functional group on the other, a different part of it. And then, and then what happens is this loses a bond to oxygen mm -hmm. and instead has a bond to another hydrogen, mm -hmm. um, which, oh man. Okay. Wait. So when it loses bonds to oxygen, that is being reduced. Yep. Okay. So that's a reduction. So Good been, job. Been reduced. It's reduction reaction. Mm -hmm. And then from here, it is a bunch of other stuff. What very complicated stuff, including some enzymes that help it make it happen and all that kind of stuff. And then it ends up back to the cis U shaped yeah molecule we started out with. And if it has time, sorry, um, to do all those things, then it's like the shield takes a little bit of a hit. But gets to f regenerate. Yep. Um, I guess it's not exactly what's happening because it's not like it's that way. It's regenerate might mean something different in yeah chemistry or something like that. But, but it is kind of like a shield that regenerates. Right. Yeah. Um, it's built in that it can get back to its state it was mm -hmm. before, take more hits, then take some time, get back to where its state was before, take more hits, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the caution is that if we have a lot of direct exposure to the sun, or a bunch kind of in a row. Mm -hmm. um, look at it, look back, look at it, look back. Um, we are causing a lot of those bonds to break, molecules to change um, a lot at once. And they're not having time to go through the whole process to go back to still be protecting this very sensitive parts of our eyes. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be. So we're, we're un, un, wittingly letting the sun damage our eyes in a way that, that may be destructive, like long-term and can't be fixed Yeah, or healed on just by a natural. Stuff. Exactly. The only thing I would add is that these shields also have the dual purpose of communicating that, Oh, we're looking at light. Right. So they are shields, but they are also like shields that collect information and <laughs> relay it back, which right. that's kind of where the, like a analogy sensor breaks down kind of thing. Yeah. Like a sensor shield. Yeah. 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 That, that makes sense. So it, it knows when it's, when it's being affected. Mm -hmm. It like so that transformation when the light hits it and it goes from cis to trans, that change is also part of like, Oh, now we're going to set off a chain of chemical reactions that communicates to the neurons that we have seen light. Got it. So, so. would that be involved in the iris sort of, the pupil dilating or narrowing. I don't know. Cause like obviously our eyes know we're looking at more at brighter light, mm -hmm. you know, so the aperture sh shrinks and stuff, but probably I would imagine that would all be connected. Yeah. Dang. Um, and you asked about the wavelengths. I will say so. Um, and one of my major sources that I used today was an article from chemistry and engineering news. And it says that, um, the eye's outermost layer, known as the cornea, catches the short wavelength region of the ultraviolet B light, while um, the lens, the eye's window, filters out the remaining UVB and part of UVA. Mm. And it also says that those in um, children are much clearer, and that's why children are more susceptible to overexposure to sunlight, which is 
something that happened to you, right? When mm-hmm. you were a child, you accidentally got overexposure to the sunlight. Yeah, I remember my, um, I don't know how that would have happened, but I remember my optometrist telling me that I had some UV damage on my eyes. And I was mm-hmm. like, how dare you? <laughs> no, I was like, oh, golly, I didn't know that. Yeah. So your light, your light shields betrayed you. Yep. So also, I, I don't, I don't know this as a f- fact, but I feel like glasses now a days, like the, even like the, like a fairly affordable pair you get has better shielding on it. Yeah. We've talked about that when we were kids. A lot of them are made with acetate instead of glass. Yeah. And that is like a UV. Isn't it not let UV in at all? Didn't we talk about that on a previous episode? I think we did. We probably did. That if like you had it under a UV light, it would look like a solid piece yeah. of plastic. So it must be that the damage happened when I was before I had glasses or it made my first couple of pairs. I got glasses in fourth grade. So I had a lot of time to, to run around in the Texas sun. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Texas sun. <laughs> mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It was 90 degrees here today and it's February. Yeah. (laughs) So anyway, there's a lot of other things that happen. If the sun goes too much, it can oxidize a lot of other species in our eyes. And then these oxidized species can, you know, it can do like set off a chain of chain reaction that gets a bunch of different, like of the important fats in our eyes oxidized. It could do all kinds of stuff that's really bad, but basically that's when our eyes start taking the hit is when it gets overwhelmed Mm. when there's too much light. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and even it like just one molecule that can get too much energy and it can do all kinds of crazy stuff in our eyes, like a kamikaze situation. So, Dang. um, so that's what happens in our eyes, but UV glasses work. Do you want to guess how they work? How the, um, how solar glasses work? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I do remember the orientation of the like, like left hand right. Was it left hand right hand or was it just uh like That's vertical horizontal? That's polarized horizontal? lenses, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll okay. just tell you. Just tell me. They just it just blocks ninety nine point nine nine percent of the sun's light. It just makes it like almost nothing is getting through here, and that when only. 0.01% of the sun's light is getting through. That's when it's safe for us to look at it. Wow. Yeah. That's great. We have to, we have to like block that much of it. Yeah. We have to re- reduce it in the like lay people's term uh, version that much to handle it. Okay. And so I said that the sun's during a total eclipse, the sun is completely blocked. So during a total eclipse, if you are in the path of totality, for whatever the time period of the totality it is, it is safe to look at it with your eyes. That's cool. Because there's no sun that you're looking at. That's cool. But you have to be careful because you're in the path of totality. Like right. you have to make sure that it's totality because it'll seem dark even if it's not all being covered up. Like there's still a ring on the outside and it seemed dark and dusky. Yeah. So it'll be dark-ish and it not be completely covered up. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But it is safe during a total solar eclipse to look directly at the sun because you're not looking directly at the sun. Got it. Only during that time when it's totally eclipsed. So like, don't say I told you to look at it during any other part. Okay. Okay. And don't get hurt. <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> it just it'd be better safe than sorry. Have your, you can order like sheets of paper for $10 online and hold those up. Yeah. S- sheets of solar paper. And the glasses are not that expensive either. Mm-hmm. If you want to have a little, that form factor. I um, thought about it probably about only about a week and a half before the previous one Mm -hmm. and just ordered some real quick. Mm -hmm. A pack of them. They got here like a few days before. It was perfect. Nice. And I was like, I am the king. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Well, just make sure that you're actually getting ones that are certified. So I link in our show notes, um, like a NASA page that goes over the different types of eclipse. And on that, it links a place with reputable sellers nice. that definitely have it. And it shows you how to know there's like a certification. Oh, well. oh, sorry. sorry, nighttime recording. There's a certification <laughs> on it that says like such and such certified to be sure that it's 99.9%. Okay. But nice. it really has to be like only 0.01% of the light can get through. Got it. To be safe. Got it. Okay, and that's it as a solar wow. eclipse. 
So I'm really excited. That's awesome. Where were you for the last solar eclipse? I was right here. Actually, you know what? For the beginning of it, I was at the park. Um, we had had a get together. A lot of the guys from our church were there and we had walked around and hung out and just enjoyed it. It was a really nice day that morning. And then I had brought the glasses with me. So we kind of swapped them around. We were seeing the, the earliest phases of it. Then I came back here and watched the rest here. But what's cool about it is that with a lot of trees in our backyard oh, and yeah. stuff like that. So that shadow thing was happening literally that weird crescent. everywhere. Like yeah. it was so trippy. That crescent is weird. But it was a lot of fun. It was, it was like the weather could not have been better. So it was just like we just hung out outside. I'm a little worried that it's going to be cloudy on our solar eclipse uh. day. But so on the last solar eclipse in October, um, the path of totality was like three hours south of here or whatever. Well, that was when we were moving into our new house and I found a dresser that matched my vintage dresser in San Antonio. And Mason drove to San Antonio that day and missed the like total solar, like that, that annular solar eclipse by like two hours, oh, but man. drove basically all the way to it. I was like, are you sad? And he was like, nah, I don't really uh, care. Oh my gosh. But I'm much more excited about this one. Yeah. I, uh, I would have been very sad if I were him. I remember getting really sad as a kid at one point, like one of the planets, um, I think it was Saturn was more visible for like a certain amount of time. Um, and it would take like 10 more years before it happened that way again. Mm hmm. And so it was like, get a telescope, do this, blah, blah, blah. Like you can, you can actually kind of see it with like stuff you can get for the average person. Yeah. And uh, we had a telescope at one point, but it, we couldn't find it or it broke or something. I remember being so bummed as a kid. <laughs> I was like, well, we, it's going to be so long before we can see it again. My yeah. parents were like, okay, like, <laughs> sorry. It does feel <laughs> like the 17 one was like pretty, not that long ago. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fun. Thanks for um, letting me talk about this. Do you want to wrap it up with a quick, fun thing about your life? I would love to. Um, if only I could think of a quick, fun thing for my little life. Well, alternatively, I we jumped the gun and I was going to ask what our plans were for this solar eclipse, but I was excited and talked about it anyway. So that can oh, yeah. be our fun thing if you want. Well, I'll tell you um, one thing that I started to tell you already before we pressed record earlier. Oh, okay. It, that has been cool, fun, feels good is that I've been getting better sleep, getting to bed earlier, wow, waking up earlier, absolutely crushing my morning routine. Oh, I love that. And it just feels great, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'll say something similar that's like also quick. Okay. As I, well, since I got married, I've been much better at getting enough sleep. Unless there's like a big work thing. But um, I have been trying to figure out about my blood sugar. You and I have talked about like our blood sugars both sometimes crash. And uh -huh. that can be a sign of early insulin resistance. Mm. And I also have um, some other conditions that are linked with insulin resistance. And also I have a vitamin D, which we talked about, deficiency, which can also right. be linked to insulin resistance. And so I've been trying to figure out ways to balance my blood sugar, you know, and uh -huh. like be nicer to it and not have it do these crazy spikes and, and then like it'll spike up and then crash down. Uh -huh. And, um, I found that a piece of avocado toast every morning for breakfast almost has no effect on my blood sugar. Wow. And your uh, mother-in-law has been making a sourdough bread. That's right. And so I'll take sourdough bread, toast it a little on the cast iron, mm -hmm. smash half an avocado, put a little bit of salt, some peppers, some red chili flakes, and fry one egg quick. Uh -huh. Put that on top. I've had it every day for breakfast for like Dude, a very long time. That's the millennial dream right there. We became obsessed with avocado toast. Who would have thought about like, what was that, like six, seven years ago? Yeah, who, I didn't like it back then. <laughs> yeah, but who would have thought that would be the key to yeah. your situation. And it, it keeps me full all the way through until lunch. Yes. And I've noticed that it just like keeps everything else. It, everything seems to have a lot lower of effect. And there's a lot of talk about fiber, which is mm -hmm. also something we did a podcast episode about mm -hmm. and how um, colon cancer is on the rise for people our age. And mm -hmm. they think it's because a lot of the processed foods that we tend to eat don't have fiber in it. Mm -hmm. And guess what has a ton of fiber? Avocados. Yes. Nice. And so this is all very good mm -hmm. for you. But also my friend Jenna told me about eggs. And so I've been getting the pasture raised eggs, which um, 
little sneak peek. I think that's what I'm going to talk about in our next Kim. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Tune into the Kim Immunity Secret Podcast for Chemistry for Your Life supporters to hear more about that. So yeah, we've both been doing our morning routines. We've been eating our eating our healthy breakfast. I don't know if you've been having a healthy breakfast, but doing our healthy routine. Yes. Mine is that I do not eat breakfast, oh, which okay. I could talk about yeah. on our community. Okay. If you want. Okay. Yeah. But I, that is my, that is what helps me. Yes. I've heard that longer mm-hmm. you go between eating gives your insulin time, your blood sugar time to come back down. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, come to our community to hear all about what we eat. And, or what we don't eat. <laughs> or what we don't eat. And um, thanks for, thanks for let me share my excitement about this. I'm really excited about the solar eclipse. I can't wait. And um, I'm sure I'll post something on our podcast Instagram about that. Yes. Thanks for teaching us. Yes. Very pumped about the eclipse. Very pumped that I know more about it. Yeah. Very pumped about the chemistry involved. That you can tell Sean. Yes. <laughs> I'll be like, listen, I know you don't listen to the podcast, but guess what? You're trapped in the car with me. <laughs> That's right. Um uh, Well, thanks for teaching us. Thank you guys for sending your questions. Sam, for sending this question about the eclipse. We love hearing your questions, your thoughts, your ideas, your follow-ups, whatever. Please send those to us at our website, chemforyourlife.com. That's chem, F-O-R, yourlife.com to share your thoughts and ideas. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, like we talked about earlier at the beginning of the episode, you can join our super cool chem community to help support the show and you get to have some cool perks and get extra some behind podcast the, episodes mm-hmm, extra episodes you get to see some behind the scenes kind of stuff anyway we'd love to have you join our community but if you're not able to do that oh yeah i should tell you where to do it at <laughs> we're a little out of practice at patreon.com <laughs> slash chem for your life patreon.com slash chem for your life that's where you can join our super cool chem community but if you're not able to do that you can still help us by subscribing on your favorite podcast app rating and writing review on apple podcasts and subscribing on youtube Uh, That helps us a lot, helps more people to be able to hear about chemistry. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jam Robinson. Jam Robinson is our producer, and this episode was made possible by our community, by our financial supporters on Patreon. And it really is so exciting to us that you want to help support us and make chemistry accessible to even more people so we can learn about cool things like the solar eclipse. So those supporters are our new friends, Cullen and Jeanette. And then we also have Avishai B, Bree M, who sometimes makes illustrations. Um, Brian K, Carol R, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Elizabeth P, Emerson W, Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Katrina H, Latila S, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Rachel R, Sarah M, Stephen B, Shadow, Suzanne P, Timothy P, Venus R, Radioactive Dreams. Thank you so much for your support and um, for everything you did to make Chemistry for Life happen. And then we have an extra special thanks to Bree, who often creates illustrations to go along with episodes of Chemistry for Your Life. And you can see those over on our YouTube channel. Or you can um, support Brie by following her on Twitter or on her website, entropic.artstation.com, and you can get the links to those in our show notes. And if you'd like to learn more about today's episode, you can check out the references for this episode in our show notes or in the description of the video on YouTube. And... And yay chemistry! Yay chemistry! I was going to come in too early with that. Uh, <laughs>